Good morning. I am sorry to interrupt. I love hearing our, this room full of us connecting with one another. So welcome. Welcome to worship at Blacksburg Presbyterian Church. I am so glad you are taking time to worship, whether it's here and now or online today or later this week. I'm glad you're taking time to breathe and recenter in our source, our Creator. This is a community where all are welcome, where we believe that God's arms are wide and Jesus' table is long and the waters of the Holy Spirit run deep. So, no matter your story, no matter where you're coming from, you are welcome here. There's space for you. Sarah Wines has some notes about our life together. Is it on? Yeah, I guess it is. Um, as usual, I invite you to find the friendship registers at the ends of the pews. Put your name on them, pass them down, pass them back, so you'll know the names of the people that you're sitting with and can greet them by name. I have several notes about our life together. First of all, after worship today, everyone is invited to join in on pumpkin carving down on the patio by the parking lot. Carving tools will be provided. You need to bring your pumpkin. And it's also a lot of fun to watch, even if you're not carving. Next Saturday, November 2nd, all are welcome to join us in gleaning apples at Doe Creek Farm. The commercial season is over, and we'll be making sure that good food that's still left gets eaten instead of going to waste. Meet in the parking lot at 2 o'clock on Saturday or out at the farm. You can Google where it's located in Jaws County at 2.30. Bring a strong bag with handles to hold the apples you pick, and they'll be taken to the food pantry in boxes afterwards. And you don't have to let us know if you're going, but if you let us know, we can let the food pantry know kind of how many apples to expect. So you can talk to me. Uh, I forget who else, so just me, I guess. <laughs> um, if you would like to add the name of a loved one that you've lost to the Communion of Saints cloth, it's in the Fellowship Hall today. That's for All Saints Sunday next week. I said Fellowship Hall. It's in the gathering space. Um, our collection for buying pork and beans for the Montgomery County Christmas Store is going on right now. The Christmas Store is an all-volunteer, nonprofit that provides toys, clothing, personal and household items, as well as boxes of food to low-income families every year around the holidays. So we invite you to make a donation. You can uh, label it, label a check, and leave it in the offering plate or donate online. We're trying to get enough money to buy 
1,300 cans by next Sunday. I don't have any idea what the status is, so just assume we need a lot more by November 3rd. Everyone is invited after worship for refreshments and fellowship in the gathering space. Let us now center ourselves as we prepare to worship together. Please rise in body or in spirit as we call one another to worship. Grace and peace be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In the beginning, in the very beginning, the Creator made a home, a home for each of us and all of us, a home with beauty and plenty, a home for grace. Each week we come home, we make a home together, a home where arms open wide in welcome, a home with a long table with plenty of room, a home where grace overflows. So friends, welcome home. Sinner and saint in us all, welcome home. With your dearest hopes and deepest fears, welcome home. With your questions and your trust, welcome home. With your joy and your sorrow, your rage and your love, welcome home. Whoever you are, no matter your story, welcome home. There's a place for you. 
come on in. Pull up a chair. This is a home of grace. may be seated. Will you join me as we call one another to confession? It sometimes helps to think of confession as a chance to set down our heavy baggage, the fears and regrets that get too big to carry alone. It's a way to confide in a listening ear to let ourselves be seen and known, trusting that this is a home where grace abounds and love never ends let us set down all that's become unmanageable, everything that's too hard to handle alone. Let us ask for help, trusting in this house. Our needs will be met. Will you pray with me? Homemaker, you set the table for us. Get out the fresh sheets and the warmest blankets and always leave the porch light on. But the truth is, we aren't sure we're ready to come in. We hide and let fear rule our lives. We hurt others, and we hurt ourselves.
We want to change. We need your help. Remind us of your forgiveness, your unwavering acceptance, your love that never ends. Take us by the hand and bring us home to grace. Amen. Friends, you are a child of God, holy and beloved, not because of anything you've done or haven't done, but simply because God says so. So we don't need to be mired in regret or in guilt, because in Christ we can always be made new. So friends, here. And trust the good news. In Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as we sing our response. here, in some ways, is practice for what we do out there. And so we practice praise and confession and peace. So I invite you to greet one another with a sign of Christ's peace. And as we do so, I invite children to come forward. The peace of Christ be with you. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. All right. Good morning. So I have a question. What do we need to live? What do you need? Yes. Water. Water. Life. Life. Oxygen. Food. Oxygen. Books. Books. <laughs> Shelter. Oh, what do you think? 
trees, trees, yes, yes. Shelter, very good, yeah. So, um, so those are things we need to live. What do we need to have a home? What's the difference between just living and having a home? We need a house. A house, yes. Things to build houses, yes. The house is a form of shelter, um, living is a form of life. Okay, the house is a form of shelter, living is a form of life, very good. You need family, right? Yeah, I mean, you can have just a house, but, but when it's a home, that's because you've got people to share it with and love, right? You need love. And you need love, exactly, very good. So we have all of these things that we need because where did they come from? God, right answer, good job. They come from, so I would like us to stand up and take a little walk in just a second, not just yet. Um, so we have all of these things because of the grace of God. So that word grace, what does grace mean? Whew, grace is one of those words we use in church and it's one of those used, I, I remember as a kid watching the Olympics and they said this, the figure skater was graceful. And I was like, what does that mean? It I mean grace. What does grace mean? Grace. Grace, good, yes. Yeah, so it can be kind of smooth and beautiful. But when we talk about grace with God, we're talking about gift, from, a gift from God. It's not something you earn. It's not something that, oh, I deserved that. It's a gift that God created the world as a gift and created us as a gift and gave us the world so that we would have a place to live and call home. And it's a lot of gifts and be in relationship with God and with all of each other. So um, I don't know how often you have noticed, but we have these banners on the walls. This series of banners, is, these are called our creation banners. So I want to get up, uh, we'll stand up and we'll kind of walk just down the center aisle and look off and we'll, We'll point out different ones and we'll see where some of these things that you guys talked about, where, where they came in creation. Um, okay, let's hop on. Yes, yeah, so the question was, is that the Big Bang? So what do you think that one might have been, uh, be about creating? Can, what, when the earth was created and do you see the mirrors in the middle? That's light. So this one is kind of let there be light. And light gives us energy and lets us see what's going on. And I'll, yeah, we're getting there too. What do you think this one might be? It does look a little bit like a bird. What do you guys, air? Did somebody say air? This is sort of the separation of the sky and, and or water up in the sky and water down below. And in between, if you look at it really closely, there's some great texture in the middle that I think is kind of land. Um, but it's lots of energy in separating water. All right, let's come down a little farther. Okay. All right. Okay. What do you guys see in this one? What, what types of things were being created in this one? Yes. Plants, exactly. So this is where we would get some of the food that we talked about. This is where, this would include the trees that we need for shelter, right? Um, okay, how about this last one on this side? <laughs> the sun and the moon and the stars, and, yeah, Audrey, what else? Galaxy, yeah, all the, all the things in the heavens. And so there's, yeah, the light from the sun that dominates the day, the light from the moon, which we know is really reflected sun. But anyway, um, all of this, so that's the, the light, and we get energy from the sun, right, because we need that to live too. How about this, this one at the back over here? What is that? A peacock. Fish, good job. It took me a while to figure that one out. So this, on this day, they were talking about creatures in the water, and creatures in the air, so fish and birds. Well, so, um, and then here's the next one over, this last one, what do you see? What does that look like to you? Footprints, footprints of, footprints, were, because what, what do you need to get a footprint? 
You need life. You need a foot. Exactly. You need feet. So this is cr God about gave God gave us feet so we can move around and gave, gave uh, feet to all kinds of different creatures. Some are big and some are little, but that's another place. We get our food from the animals and from the birds and the fish and the plants. And God creates all of this so that we can live together. And it was given to us by God's grace, right? What? What do you think? Well, they might be dating. They might be friends. I don't know. You guys, you can contemplate that. Let's pray. Let's, <laughs> let's pray. Re repeat after me. Loving God, thank you for knowing what we need. Thank you for providing what we need. Thank you for giving us the gift of love. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, very good. You can go back or come downstairs either way. Let us pray. Creating, sustaining, redeeming God, awaken us to your presence this morning. Calm the constant chatter of our thoughts and give us spacious hearts to receive you. Amen. Our scripture from today, for today is from Genesis chapter 1 and then Genesis chapter 2. Humankind was created as God's reflection. In the divine image, God created them. Female and male, God made them. God blessed them and said, bear fruit, increase your numbers, fill the earth and be responsible for it. Watch over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things on earth. God then told them, Look, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit carries its seed inside itself, they will be your food. And to all the animals of the earth, and the birds of the air, and things that crawl on the ground, everything that has a living soul in it, I give all the green plants for food. So it was. God looked at all of this creation and proclaimed that this was good, very good. God fashioned an earth creature out of the clay of the earth and blew into its nostrils the breath of life. And the earth creature became a living being. God planted a garden to the east, an Eden, land of pleasure, and placed in it the earth creature that had been made. Then God caused every kind of tree, enticing to look at and to eat, to spring from the soil. In the center of the garden was the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Who set the table at the last meal you ate? got out the plates, the silverware, 
the cups. Maybe it was someone else in your house. Maybe you did. Maybe it was a server you never saw at a restaurant or in a dining hall or at Showalter. Maybe setting the table is putting it nicely and really you just grabbed a bowl of food and plopped down on the couch. That's fine too. But regardless, who provided the food? Who cleared the space? Who grabbed the silverware? There are virtually endless images for the divine in Scripture. Lord, King, Judge, Father, Mother Hen, Chicken. Did you hear that one? Eagle, Water, Flame, Cloud, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, Savior, Healer, and on and on and on. A few years ago, a friend pointed out to me an image in a passage I thought I knew inside out. The 23rd Psalm, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. Clearly the image there is of a shepherd. But buried down there, about two-thirds of the way through, it says, you set a table before me. God's the one who sets the table. We see God in the ones who set the table. God doesn't just feed us. Apparently, God wipes away the crumbs, gets out the tablecloth, sets out the plates, fills the glasses, lights the candles. Maybe the one who teaches us how to say grace. These next few weeks, we'll be reflecting together on grace. Grace, one definition, is that it is the unmerited favor of God. In other words, grace is God's love for us and all creation that exists not because of anything we do, but just because that's how God is. God can't help but be gracious. It's easy to hear and read the words we read just a few moments ago from Genesis and leap immediately to the end of the story, the forbidden fruit, and all the pain and suffering and terrible theology that has flowed from that down through the years. But let's stop. It's not get ahead of ourselves. The people who told these stories didn't know our millenniums, millennia, millennia of theology. They didn't have a word like original sin. That's not the story they were telling. Look again. What does God look like in this passage? An artist, a builder, an engineer, a gardener, a creator who takes satisfaction in their work. This creator is the one who made order out of chaos. That's how it begins at the very beginning. We didn't read it, but God hovers over the chaos and then separates the waters, and land appears. Sort of like the parent or grandparent or babysitter who has to pick up the Legos to create a safe path from door to bed. God pushes back the chaos and makes space 
for life. God turns a chaotic jumble into a home. In these stories, God is our homemaker, stocking the pantry, planting an herb garden, feeding the dog, setting the table. Homemaker is not a job title that inspires a great deal of respect and admiration in our culture. I can't count how many older women I've talked with who say, oh, I didn't have a career. I I was just at home. But no, anyone who's ever tended to a home of any sort, which is all of us, knows that it is work. There's no two ways around it. It is artistic and creative and compassionate and tedious and never done and physical and intellectually demanding, sometimes heart-wrenching, deeply rewarding some days. And it is sacred work. It is our first image of God. God, our homemaker. This homemaker God sets up house, turns on the lights, fixes dinner, sets the table, even after failure and disappointment enter the story, after Adam and Eve have eaten the forbidden fruit, God makes some clothes before sending them out into the world. A seamstress God. We were made in the image of this homemaker God. We are made to be homemakers of grace. Now, that does not mean you have to start ironing your sheets or vacuuming every day, twice a day, the way my eighth grade trigonometry teacher did, unless you enjoy those things. But making a home for grace does not mean having an Instagram or magazine spread ready house. It means our task is to create spaces where grace can flourish, where we are reminded of our unconditional acceptance that we always have a home to return to. That's what we're trying to do here. That is one way to think about what church is about. We can get swept up in big plans and visions and projects, and those are all good. But it turns out making a home, an ecosystem of grace, mostly consists of little, seemingly inconsequential tasks. At the last church I served, it was a smaller congregation, and so I was the solo pastor, and so I was the one who unlocked the building every Sunday morning. And there was an old man there named Coy, Coy was from Oklahoma, where they give names like Coy. (laughs) And he, in many ways, was losing a lot. He was losing his balance, his words, 
his energy. But Coy came to me in my office one day, unannounced as he always came, sat down and said without preamble, it would be a joy if you would let me unlock the church each Sunday. It would be a joy. And each Sunday, very slowly, with lots of breaks, Coy would go from door to door, opening them, turning on the lights, turning up the thermostat. Coy knew he wasn't just unlocking some building. He was opening a space where people would come hungry and longing for rest and renewal and recentering in that love from which we came and which we seek to share. The scouts who use our building all the time hold an annual banquet, and it is a production. It's maybe for a hundred people. There are tablecloths, there are decorations, there are games, there's a feast. And like these kinds of things do, it required quite a bit of doing to put it together, and it required quite a bit of doing to clean it up. And it was late into the evening, and we were in the, in the kitchen finally doing the last few things. Someone had taken the trash out. My friend Karen was bagging up some of the leftover food so that folks could take it home, have an easier dinner one night that week. And she pulled out the last Ziploc bag in our, in our drawer in the kitchen, And she immediately looked up at me and said, I'll go by the store tomorrow and get another box of Ziploc bags to replace what we took. I said, Karen, that's not not necessary. Don't worry about it. We can get Ziploc bags. And she said, no, Sarah, because I know She doesn't go to our church. She said, I know there's a woman who knows how many Ziploc bags are in this drawer. And she's keeping a mental count of that and the dishwasher detergent and the napkins so that we don't run out. So yes, I do need to go get a box of Ziplocs for her. We could roll our eyes at that, but there are those people who keep track of the things that make for feasts, make for a way to share leftovers, make for grace at our tables. There are always people in the background making sure the Ziplocs don't run out. There's a couple here who has been preparing communion for longer than anybody can remember. Each month, cut pieces of bread and fill those little bitty cups bring it all in, and set it up. And each week there are greeters back there who greet each of us as if we were Christ because they see that in us. And there are people who take hundreds of heavy cans of food to the food pantry. All we've done is just bring a couple here. But there are people 
who carry them all and put them on shelves. There are people who set out cookies and lemonade, nothing fancy, store-bought cookies, and it might seem like not a big thing, but it is every child I've ever talked to's favorite part <laughs> because they can taste and see that God is good, that this is a place where you get fed. It's these seemingly inconsequential, definitely not glamorous tasks that make it possible for us to gather and to root into love and spend time with one another, feast and repent, weep, rejoice. These tasks are what makes this big old stone building that is so cold when no one's in it into a home for grace, not just for us, for our whole community. We are made to be homemakers for grace. And goodness knows our weary world needs more homes for grace. Amen. may be seated.
as we move into a time of prayer with and for one another, we'll begin with silence. And then we'll have prayers read aloud. And if you have a prayer you would like offered aloud, you can write that down on some of the paper that's in your pews and pass it towards the center. Come, friends, let us pray. Gracious God, come into our hearts and never leave. Be in our breath, be in our hands, our words, the way we look at the world, the way we listen. Tune our hearts to your songs of grace so that we might share it, embody it, carry it into the places of pain, grief, suffering, carrying the gospel good news of your unending love. These are the prayers of our community. We pray for a friend of Judy Reem Snyder who is seriously injured from being hit by a car as a pedestrian. Prayers for a full recovery. We pray for peaceful and democratic national and local elections. For Dorothy Dommermuth, who's in hospice care and expected to pass soon. For the people's family, for healing and peace. For all suffering in Ukraine and Palestine and in our streets, and thanks for beauty in our own lives. For a best friend struggling with health issues. For the people of Springfield, Ohio, fiercely divided over Haitian immigrants, and prayers for the immigrants as well. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Well, I looked it up just to be sure. Stewardship means taking care of something. We talk about sharing our resources and our gifts when we talk about stewardship. So we should sign up for something and give financially. It seems pretty straightforward and transactional, but I've come to see that there's a lot more to it. At other churches I've attended, I've been a Sunday-only member you know, in the pew or the padded folding chair for an hour on Sundays, and then back to my regular life. I thought that was all there was to it, and honestly, it felt a little empty. So what's changed for me here at BPC? I got out of my comfort zone and took that awkward first step of signing up, and it actually worked. 
something special happened in the kitchen, if you can believe it, working side by side with other folks, arranging cookies, uh, drying dishes, you know, just the normal things. But by working together and making and growing those connections, you come to know people. And that's where I see grace. Everyday, ordinary grace playing out. There's easy grace, like sharing an appreciation for those golden trees outside our windows. And then there's the exceptional grace that holds you close when the worst happens, like the love and care I received from you after my brother passed away earlier this year. We slowly build our community one person at a time, one name, and then two, and then so many. I'm really glad we have name tags. And these people around us here, they are our church community. And that's where I experience grace at BPC. I volunteer in the hospitality ministry. And for me, there isn't anything better than watching people gather around tables, eating and talking and laughing and sharing, building community where grace flourishes. And it works both ways. I give time, money, gifts, but I get so much more. I get to watch our community grow and share and live out God's grace. And I wish the same for you, my friends. It is a tough old world out there, and we sure do need each other. During our stewardship season, as we're reflecting on grace, there is an extra step to the offering. We're going to take time to reflect on where have we received grace? And how do we pledge to offer grace in the coming week? And if you're the kind of person who processes things better when you write them down, there are cards in the pews that are brightly colored that look like this. And the ushers are going to take a minute before they come down the aisle so you can pray and reflect on how you've received and how you want to give. Come, friends, let us give thanks for all we've been given and all that is ours to give.
Would you join me as we dedicate these offerings together using the words in your bulletin? Giver of life, thank you for the grace we have received. Thank you for the grace we're able to give. With your blessing, may these offerings become a gift of grace in your good world. Amen. We'll close with hymn 687. Would you join me in our closing words? This is the day that God has made. We will not offer to God. Go in peace to love and to serve. In the name of the Trinity of love. And so go. And as you go, may you go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the unending love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit, this day, unto your life eternal. Amen. Amen.